Welcome to AG7's interim report of quarter one. Today I'm going to say a few words about the quarter and then look into what we see the future of the year looking like. We're going to have a little bit look at the financial development of the quarter and some comments there. And then something that many shareholders has been asking us to talk more about the game pipeline. During the first quarter of 2020, AG7 as a group had almost a thousand percent increase of revenue if you compare to the first quarter of last year. Not only that, but we also have 20 projects in development, both for publishing side and our internal development that we're super excited about. And Petrol has over 40 projects in the pipeline for marketing, which the last one was Assassin's Creed. Valhalla and Call of Duty or so. Something that's really important I think to talk about is COVID-19 that has affected the world and, and we have tried our best here at the company to do what we can to lower the spread just here locally in Sweden by making sure that as long as possible to keep our employees at home to protect families and to protect our employees. Some effects that we've seen in the business is that we've pushed some of our revenue from Q2 to Q3 as we've chosen to shuffle on some of our launches. And that means that we now have six game titles launching from Sold Out in Q3. One of them, the very much anticipated No Straight Roads. But that's not the only thing that's happened in the quarter. We've also raised 119 million, got a new big major shareholder in the Sten Olson family and a new board member in Eric Nilsson, who represents the Sten Olsson family. Very renowned investor, and we are very happy to have him on board to make the group even better. This also puts us in an even stronger position into the future to invest in titles and to invest in our M&A efforts. And this is something that we're super excited about, and that is that we've been spending this quarter really merging all of these companies into the group, improving our operations, improving our strategy for the year, and also built out our M&A team. And this means that our M&A team now has already gathered up a bunch of different companies that look very interesting that we're talking to, uh, that we are hoping to get a deal with in the coming year. And from me as a bigger shareholder in this company and owner, to all of you owners out there, I'm super excited about this year and I hope you are too. Some key takeaways from the financial statement is that uh, the first quarter of last year we had 14.8 million in revenue and this year's first quarter we had 155.5 million in revenue. So that is a, a 949% increase of revenue uh, and we also had a 12.2 million EBTA. We had a negative EBIT, and this is due to depreciation. And this is because of our accounting practices, and we are, have the intention in the future to change our accounting practices, which will uh, affect this number quite dramatically. We also have increased from 81 staff to 191 staff, which is quite a big increase over the year. And this means that we're put in an even better position for the future. Let's have a look at the game pipeline. One of the most exciting titles of Q3 is No Straight Roads, which has won many prizes and an epic award. We also see Westmark Manor, which is internally developed by some of the developers at Toadman, which is uh, also a very exciting smaller project. And then we have The Senders, Radical Rabbit Stew, which are published by Sold Out. And we have Disjunction, Gestalt and Kiwi coming out in Q3. So as you can see, there's a lot of exciting things coming Q3 from uh, our launches, uh, which we think will be very good for shareholders and uh, a great quarter. And then on Evil versus Evil, which I know many shareholders want to know more about, we've decided to not go out with any more information about the launch until Q4. The reason for this, and this also applies to the reasoning behind some of our other titles like 83 and IGI having quite wide launch dates. We have learned from the past, as we have told shareholders, that we do not want to make the mistake again of launching titles that come out in bad timings and therefore uh, ruining all the potential in the game. 
So we're very careful now with setting the release date to the best possible one. Even if a game is finished or not, we would choose the best timing for the best results for us and shareholders. And therefore we will remain silent about exactly when it launches until the moment we are sure. And therefore we can also see 83 Project IGI is going to be 2021 to 2022 to have a big window of opportunity to launch. We also have Minimal Effect that will come out in 2021. That is a new game we just announced that formerly called Project Anubis. And then we have another unannounced project, Project Hater in the works that we're aiming to launch in 2021 and 2022. Block and Load 2 is a IP that we know that many gamers are very much looking forward to seeing and that one we also see 2021 and 2022 and then we have four undisclosed projects from sold out that we haven't announced yet i want to thank all shareholders uh, for joining us on this journey uh, we feel and i feel here at eg7 both very grateful and thankful but also that the journey has just begun thank you very much